Hello everyone, this is Larry Finale and welcome to learning how to cook with Moa. Uh, sorry about the delay but we had some technical, well I had some technical difficulties. My um, my PC just cracked out. Sorry about that. I had to borrow a neighbor's machine which is a, it's very slow so again I apologize for any sort of delay that you might be experiencing. But let's get right to the right to the show. Um, we, we have some good friends in the uh, in the strip. Um, I'll just go down the, the list here. George Cohen and Marilyn. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> um, next name is George Sepich. Hey, the show must go on. Right. And, yes. Uh, Jesse, Jesse is new. Hello. That's a friend. The Hi Jesse. Not new to our Trinidadian viewers. New, 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 new to the hangout. Right. <laughs> And next, next to me is Linda D. Hi, Linda. She's from New York. And then we have Marilyn. She's in California. Next, we have Richard. He's in South Africa. And, of course, uh, the lady of the hour, Serena. Serena Bland. Or Trini, or as I affectionately call her, Trini Gourmet. Okay, so let's just get right to it. So, Serena, what will you be preparing for us today? Well, today... As people here and Hindus around the world know, last Tuesday was Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights. So in keeping with that, I developed a little bit of an Indian spread today. So we're going to have some uh, tridoshic dal, yes. um, which is Ayurvedic. It's good for all body types if you know about the Ayurveda system. And um, it's a little different to the traditional Trinidadian dals, but it's one that's become a favorite of mine, so I'm going to share it with everyone. And of course, I have a little bit of a Trini spin on it. And I'll also be doing some curry chana, which yeah. is um, the chickpeas. That's what we call it here. It's the Hindu word for chickpeas. And that's going to be with some spinach as well. And to close it off, a smoothie that I call um, the electrolyzer, and Larry called it a smoothie to live for, so I'm going to steal that. I'm going to steal that one. Yeah, to die for that one. You have to live for yeah, that. That's the official name now. It's a smoothie to live for. Right. <laughs> okay, um, but I understand the dal. Well, the dal normally, it's a, it's a long process mm -hmm. to, to boil the, the, the chickpeas. And exactly. you've gone ahead and you've started that process. Right, exactly. I have a pot here that's already bubbling, but I also have one here to show the viewers how to get everything okay. started. Okay? Okay, great. So, you, you ready to roll? <laughs> ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. Okay, then. Okay, so basically what I do is I have a pot here, and it's on low heat. I'm going to put in one tablespoon of oil, vegetable oil. You can also use mustard oil. That adds a lovely extra layer of flavor and color as well, but I'm using plain vegetable oil today. Canola is my favorite um, of the plain vegetable oils to use. And so this is on a low heat. And we're just going to let it sit here for a little while to, to puff up. And what I have here as well, I hope this camera can get it well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seeing it? Yeah. What I'm seeing here, what I have here is a mixture of lime juice, curry powder, and amcha masala. And mm -hmm. amcha is brown dried mangoes. It adds a lovely tart sweetness to the flavor profile and of course you know the curry very fragrant very aromatic as well so this mixture here is going to go into the warm oil and usually when making curries or recipes that have curry I'm very suspicious of recipes where the curry is added near the end or halfway through and just kind of add it to the mixture because it'll stay very grainy then and the flavors won't really come out they don't really get a chance to bloom so I always say even if you see that in a recipe Start with yeah. the curry, start with the curry and the oil, and get those aromatics really boosting, you know? That's what you want to do. So I have this in this pot, warm oil. We're not frying it. We're just coaxing it along, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that's going to sit there for about 30 seconds while it um, develops. Any questions? Uh, isn't that what we call a chunky in the pot? I was waiting for Larry to say that. <laughs> I was I, like, I, 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 I want my guess. That's how you chunky the pot. Thank you, Jesse. Some people would, um, they would, they would put, yeah, some people would put a, a clove of garlic or two, a uh, crushed clove of garlic in the oil and uh, yes. let it season up the oil and then they would add uh, the, the curry mixture. Right. 
the right. pink here, the pot. Yes. Well, you're going to see that when I do the channel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have garlic in this now. So the spices just go in before that. But if you had garlic, if you had onions, you'd put that in there early on as well. So this is starting to become flavor. At least I'm smelling it. I don't care if you can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my problem. So now we're going to put in the split peas. And these are the yellow split peas. Um, I hope they're easy to find in your pots. They're very easy to find here in Trinidad. And I have one cup here that I've washed and rinsed until the water ran clear. They're very starchy. So um, you want to do that. It's still going to be extremely starchy even when you do it. You see how it's <laughs> stuck together? <laughs> yeah. Just from the rinsing. So putting that out. And it's still on a low heater, so don't stress if you don't find things on sizzling or whatnot. We'll get to that. So, so we're mixing um, that again into the spices. You know. And it's really, again, to help infuse the flavor of the dal. So this warm, gentle, it's more of a saute is going to bring out the flavor of the peas and have the peas really um, absorb the curry and the spices. And this doesn't have to last long either. This is just going to be about another 30 seconds or so. We're just coaxing everything along at this point. This is very much a hurry up and wait kind of dish. <laughs> okay, so that is mixed. Hopefully you can see it pretty well there. Yeah. Yes, looking good, looking good. So basically you're seducing the senses. Is that what I'm doing, Jesse? Yes, you are. Well, don't come up. Larry's half smile. <laughs> you might be right. You, you, you remember, everything for me is in slow motion right now because this mm -hmm. piece of Very convenient. Get out of here. The old slow motion excuse. I understand. But but Jesse, Jesse looks familiar. Jesse, you, you're a, um, a DJ at a local uh, news station, right? Once, a oh, one, well, not too long ago, not too long ago, um, I guess I, I uh, was at CNMG. CNMG, right, right. Ah, oh, you're first up, Gil, first up. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> so now I'm adding the vegetables, and that's what makes it different from the traditional Trinidad dal. Um, although I'm sure there are variations as well, but normally ours is very spit pea based. Um, I love this variation because it also adds pumpkin and carrots, Ooh. which adds a lovely color, a very vibrant golden hue to the pot, and also adds a little extra sweetness in the flavor. So I have here one cup, well, two cups of pumpkin, very thinly sliced, carrots also very thinly sliced, one cup. And again, sliced very thinly so that it cooks through very quickly and breaks apart because dal is very much a puree dish. Um, some people have it as a soup. We, we more have it kind of as a side here in Trinidad. But again, you want a very chunky, puree kind of texture. So very thin slicing does that. And again, not waiting too long. Maybe another 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how caught up I get in this gang here <laughs> and the top. But the key is to keep keep stirring everything, yeah? Yeah, because I don't want anything to brown, really. I'm just trying to get the spices mingling around mm -hmm. the surfaces of the pumpkin, around the surfaces of the carrot, the same spices that if you see the color of the chickpeas has started oh, yeah. to darken yeah, because yeah. the cumin and the anchoas become absorbed into the spit peas, so they are getting darker. Um, and they are very, yes? Serena, you, you ever tried using um, garam masala? In, in I love garam masala too, and I do use it, but I'm using it in the, um, in the chickpeas. So okay. I'm just kind of trying to complement my right, flavor right. profiles right here in the dishes. But yeah, yeah, if you don't have ancha, use garam masala. Again, it adds that tartness. That's what we are using both masalas for. But I love ancha. I do. Yes. <laughs> I so now that we have it, this, um, that's what? I'm hearing something. Anyway, now that we have this, and it's starting to sizzle. You probably can't hear it, but I can. It's starting to sizzle. We're going to add eight cups of water and we're going to turn up the heat. So I'm turning the heat up to high. I'm going to pour in this whole jug of water. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the dal becomes a, uh, the puree, the soup. 
And those chickpeas, they may not seem like much, but they are so starchy. This thing is going to cook down. It's going to be thick. It's going to be full-bodied. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also adding here some salt, some cut up ginger, and some hot peppers. And that adds, again, more depth to the profile. And I love ginger, because ginger adds a certain brightness. Mm -hmm. I see my girl nodding there. Yes, I love ginger, too. I, I, use, ginger, I use ginger in all of my, um, my, my dishes. Uh -huh. I love ginger. Every now and then I meet somebody who doesn't like ginger, and I always think that's, that, that's a conversion waiting to happen. That, that's, that's not <laughs> set in stone. That is not set in stone. And, and, and ginger does have medicinal benefits. That's right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's um, very I was just thinking. Love. I was just thinking how healthy this, this pot is, um, Serena. It the, is. The, the carotene from the pumpkin and the protein yes. from the um, from the split peas. It's a really healthy dish that you're making there. It's a very healthy dish. And again, that's one of the things why we're doing this series because Caribbean cooking doesn't have to be high fat, high starch. You know, some mm -hmm. of them, maybe some of the more downtrodden profiles we've gotten in recent years. It is a very healthy cuisine and we have a lot of healthy variations. Um, yeah. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Anybody in the peanut gallery besides Jesse have any questions or any comments? George, just, wow. making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Before you come in, you need to eat before you come in. So Larry, I don't know if you can see because you're on slow connection, but I had um, some Diwali pictures up which Serena had uploaded. Oh, oh no. yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Both of those, I can explain them a little bit. Uh, and I also yeah, want to mention yeah. that um, in South Africa, the Hindu community also celebrates Diwali here. Cool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and Serena went down to um, Adam Smith Square and she did some of the lighting and took some of the photos, right? Yes, that is exactly, that is an annual tradition for me. And since I was a child, Diwali is one of my favorite holidays, one of my favorite festivals. Because I just love the light. I love the, the message of light overcoming mm -hmm. darkness. I love lighting the deers. And I just love seeing the rows and rows of deers as far as you can look, you know, just flickering in the night. And everybody really comes together to keep the lights going, you know, as they become extinguished kids, elderly, young adults, everybody, regardless of religion, all pitch in to keep those lights going. And I just think it's a wonderful message. It's a wonderful quality, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a very powerful message. Yeah. Of coming together. Light triumphing triumphing over over darkness. Right. And, uh, the, the whole the whole idea of the community coming together to, to make sure that the path was, was lit uh, so that uh, Ram could find his way home. Very, very powerful message. Through the forest, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Hindu law there for you for you all. So this is starting to come up to a simmer and I'm just gonna move that to this burner. So that it can continue to cook. You all won't get to eat mm -hmm. this part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Already. <laughs> but that, oh, that, was that, very, oh, that was a very simple uh, process. So this one has been going at it for a while. And I, Larry asked me if I had an immersion blender. I used to. It died a few months ago. So this is the original Trinidadian immersion blender. <laughs> yes, and Larry know what I'm talking about. That's called a swivel stick. <laughs> yeah, the original immersion blender. Uh, never needs a new blade, never needs a socket, yes, never needs a battery. <laughs> so that is exactly what I'm using here. This is I can't tell you the last time I used one of those. <laughs> That but listen, awesome. it's really great for developing your forearms and your biceps. Yeah, I, that's what I was about to say. It's good, it good, good for your arms too. <laughs> very good, very good for your arms. You don't need yeah. that like shake weight. You don't need no shake weight. <laughs> be I, careful. I remember, look, look, I looks like it looks like you might uh, uh, be starting to get that uh, that uh, string stick almost on fire. You get so much friction going there. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I remember as a child, my mom used to have me swizzle the callaloo. Oh, right. oh yes. Yeah. Memories, huh? Yeah, that was my chore too as well. Uh, Sunday lunch, making Sunday the cow. Yes, yes. And, uh, having to swizzle it up at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my introduction. Yeah, it does a really good job. Look at that. Look yes. It's beautiful. Wow. 
Larry, does a Larry, great I think you can see if swizzlethecalaloo.com is available. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is done now because once you have this here and you bring it up to a boil, you let it boil. Well, you bring it up to a boil, then you bring it down to medium low heat and you let it sit for 45 minutes. If it's still not completely broken down, you just leave it. It's it's foolproof until it starts to break down and at that point you can use your emotion blender or if you're old school, hardcore. Get a <laughs> never let you down. No warranty required. <laughs> you understand? Good old so fashioned elbow grease. Almost. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to do a last um, step, one that my mother doesn't do, and I always kind of frown at her sideways for that, but she's not from Trinidad, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to heat up some oil. To fry my jiwa. Ah, that's the true way. That's the true way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, that's Larry. The, that's what I sometimes I would take a pot spoon. Uh, put a little oil in it. Because I have I have a gas stove. Right. Um put a little oil, put a jira, put some garlic, and put it over the heat, let it heat up, oh. and then put it in the spoon and stir it. I mean put it in a pot and yeah. stir. It's mm -hmm. nice. It adds that final yeah. oomph, that final yeah. layer that without it, something's missing. Something is missing. Exactly. So for those out there who are wondering, what is this jira? It's cumin. Again, right. jira is the Hindu word. That's very popular uh -huh. here in Trinidad. But it's very cumin, so you can see the cumin seeds here. I have my oil heating up. I like the oil to be pretty hot, so it's still getting there. Because yes. when I put these seeds in, I want them to sizzle and pop. Yeah, Sizzle and pop. pop and get that gorgeous flavor. Yeah. And then I'm going to put the oil and the seeds into the dal. You know, and you'll hear a little bit of a sizzling as the oil touches the water, and that's all yeah. part of it. That's all part of the experience. And and, and for those first timers, be a little careful because I mean, it's oil and water. Hot oil mm -hmm. and hot water just doesn't really mix too well, so it might. Uh, so just don't, don't put your face down on the pot. Yes. Yes, and, we've and, been doing and, this plenty years. Yeah, we've been doing that plenty years. So um, <laughs> we we're accustomed. But if you want to try for the first time, be a little careful. This is um, this is advanced. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not a beginner step. This is an advanced step. But it makes all the difference. But it makes, the difference. It makes uh, all the difference. So my oil looks like it's almost ready. Yeah, it could get a little hotter, but you know what? We're live, so I'm gonna. Uh, Serena and Larry, I wish that uh, the folks who are watching now could could ah. get to smell what's going on in Serena's yes. kitchen right now. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they, oh if you know that the, the, the flavor is a wonderful. Well, we can't hear it just flavor. yet, but you're gonna hear it in a second. It is sizzling, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna let it sizzle again as she pop, as Jesse says, until it pops. Mm -hmm. And then until it starts to darken just a little. I don't want to burn it, but I do want it to darken. You know, so I don't know if the camera is getting that from the yes, 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 yes. Yes, we're yes, seeing see it. Yeah. Yes, it is sizzling. So I have it on medium high. And I'm just gonna wait for it to darken just a little more. And you can probably hear the sizzling happening a little bit. <laughs> I wish, though, that everyone could smell what's going on in your kitchen. You right? wish you were in my kitchen. That's what you wish. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you were in my kitchen. <laughs> so that is going on. I say we give this another 30 seconds before we put it in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for the I, I, too, I, too, like to have it hot. Yes. We're still talking Jiro, right? <laughs> 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 I, you know, I would leave that for sepich, but you know, <laughs> you know, it's a little too much now. I, 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 think it's no, I, I don't know if you meant the dial. I don't know if you meant the dial. Oh, I'm, behaving. I'm behaving. <laughs> ah, now we're good. Okay, so now this oil is bubbling. Mm -hmm. You can see that? Yep. And yep. I'm going to step back a little. 
There we go. Nice. You hear that sizzle? Wow. Too much, which is good. Because I turned down the heat. If I had this bubbling, it would have been worse. So I'm just stir it in gently. It's already starting to thicken, and it continues to thicken as it sits. So what you'll find is no scene. If your dal starts to get really thick, just add a little more water to loosen it up, because it will thicken as it cools. These are very starchy seeds. <laughs> so that is basically it right here. We've got the dal. We've got the seeds. Let me, uh, let me come back. OK, got it. And what I'm going to finish it off with, which is also a little unusual, but I got this from the mother of an Indian friend that I had um, in my college years, and I really liked it. So they used cilantro. I'm using our shadow benny, our yeah. culantro or bandania. Yeah. And I'm finishing it off with some of that sliver. Uh, that, that, that is going to add mucho flavor to that part. Mucho yeah. flavor. Yeah. Yeah. She would fry up the jira, put it in, and then she would sometimes top it with this, and I loved it. So I, mm -hmm. I, I took that. I wrapped that little tip and brought it back to Trinidad with me because <laughs> yeah. I hadn't really seen it done before. Maybe some people have done it. And I also have here some shredded coconut mm, and nice. just a little bit of that. So you see it's a little different, right, Jesse? Yeah, but it's very but it's really nice. So it's familiar enough, but it's different enough. Mm -hmm. um, so folks, the folks who are watching, uh, the, the cilantro, or as we call it, uh, the shadow benny, that is a magic ingredient. There is something about it that just oh. magnifies your, your flavors and, 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 you know, just sets your taste I just took a whip over, there, over, over time. Yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think the folks in, in North America, they get cilantro, um, but yes. this is culantro. Yeah, okay. they can get culantro if they go to a Latin market. Latin store, yeah. yeah. Well used in Mexican cuisine especially. So if there's a large Mexican or Hispanic uh, market in their yeah, area, they should be able to get culantro. Puerto Rico, they, they use it a lot too. So right. if you live in New York, if right. you go um, to Spanish Harlem, if you live up in that area, uh -huh. you, could, you could get it You could get it there, the, the culantro. Nice, nice. <clears throat> So this is it. My dal is done. How quick was that? Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Right? That looks good. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, my, mouth, my mouth is so watering right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I live about three or four George, I wish you were there in the kitchen to yeah. taste it. Harlem, so I can I go get that. <laughs> so next thing, I mean, while the burn is still warm, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a curry channel, and I'm going to start again with a tablespoon of oil, mm -hmm. bringing it up. And here, I have the other quintessential Trinidad blend, Madras curry powder. Lovely. Uh -huh. You know you need that Madras curry powder. Lovely. I won't call any brand names just yet, too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jesse knows which is the one I'm thinking of here. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is our main um, curry powder blend that you'll find in Trinidad, the Madras blend, which is um, extremely yellow um, um, because of the, um, the turmeric. And it also has a lot of other spices in there, fenugreek and... Um, they add saffron in it, don't they? Yeah, and saffron, the turmeric. That is the, well. the, the, primer, the primary yellow color. Yeah, because yeah, saffron is super expensive, so turmeric is so so much more Yeah, yeah. They, they, they substitute it with, with turmeric because, yeah, yeah. you said, the, the saffron is expensive. Very expensive. And so I have, this is where my onion and my garlic are chopped up and included as well in this. And so just like, you know, as you had said, Jesse, about that clove, that's what I'm doing here. So I have everything already prepped here in my bowl. And I'm just going to add it to my oil. And what's that magic word again? Chunky. Okay. Thank okay. you. Chunky <laughs> the pot. I am chunking the pot. <laughs> that, that, oh, that gosh. Actually, uh, I wish you all could smell this, like almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. That the, 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 the aroma just abounds. If you can just think of your favorite East Indian takeaway or restaurant oh. and whatever you, how you feel when you step in. That's exactly what my kitchen smells like right yeah. now. <laughs> for, for, those, for those of you who might be a little confused, chonke is the Hindi word for saute. Yes. I did not know that. I always wondered if yeah. it was Trini or Hindu. No, or it's Hindu. Hindu. Well, look at that. You see? 
You get food and you get an education when you tune in. Yeah. So essentially, <laughs> you'll be sorting, but the, the chunky is a, is a little past saute because it's right at the borderline of burning. Yes. Right, right. You yes. can see the color turn. Yeah. Boy. You almost have to bring it to charcoal point, not exactly. so large. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I find sometimes people are a little afraid of, especially on like Western TV, is dark color. Because you're just like, ah, burning. No. Don't say it. Don't dark color in your pocket. I would, I would like to get like a, a roux going on my food. So. Exactly, exactly. Don't stop when it starts turning, you know. Just keep going. You know when, when it burns, you'll be coughing. But <laughs> as long as you're not coughing and it's not smoking, you're and good. And you will see smoke. You will see smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Larry, I noticed uh, Marilyn asked whether the recipe was available. Yes, actually the recipe is available on the event page. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you who are watching, you can on, on, on G Plus, you can come to the event, Learning to Cook Caribbean with Larry Fenelier. Uh, it's about the middle of the body of the event. So just click on it, it'll take you right to, um, to the recipe which is in Google Drive. What I will do, I will post this recipe separately later on. Thanks, Larry. I'll post it, I'll post it to my stream. Okay, so Marlin's ready for her uh, culinary spicy adventure. Um, and yeah, you should be able to see that. The spices yeah. are gotten dark, and they are ready to reach the next stage. So what I have here is the chana or chickpeas, and I would use tin. I, I'm not a big. I used to be a fan of tin because I thought it was convenient, but it's not as convenient as just getting dried beans, soaking them, and cooking yeah, you, them in bulk. Right up my alley. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's healthier. It's it's actually going to be quicker in the long run for you than running to the supermarket every time you need. Yeah, it's easy and, and it's fun. I just use the block bags and I portion them into two cups or four cup um, quantities. So that when I need to make a recipe, I just pull a bag out of the freezer. And it's pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar when you, you know, make your own beans from scratch. So mm -hmm. you're not getting all that stuff that's been sitting in a metal tin for yeah. months or years. Yeah. Yeah. She's not only folks, she's not only a, a great a great cook, but she's a very frugal and smart cook. I yeah. am. That's very important. Well, yeah. it's you know, it's not like soaking those uh, uh, chickpeas is hard work, right? No. no you doesn't have to plan ahead. <laughs> yeah. I think you can what do it overnight. What huh. I do is like normally I will have like three or four types of beans that I know I'm going to use, whether it's red beans, chana, um, lima beans, and I just keep them on hand. And beans are really pretty replaceable. So if you find that your recipe has white beans, but you have like three bags of red beans, be adventurous. Change up the recipe a little bit. Don't think you have to run out just to get that one tin of pinto beans or or whatever, you know, I mean, you can do that if you want, but, you know, it's, it's equally affordable and it's fun, it's adventure. Cooking is supposed to be an adventure. You know, change up the recipe, see what, you know, sometimes the substitute comes out better than what you thought you needed anyway. So, I have my chickpeas here and they are getting coated in those spices. Wow. And it's smelling really good. <laughs> I'm kind of wanting to hit pause on you all right now and just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> You're not the only one. I am I am stressed out. I am hungry. I am thirsty. Oh, God, so I'm torturing you right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't put this in the recipe, so this is a little bit of a... A little bit of a secret just for the viewers and the watchers. I, I always have a, like a little cup of water on hand on the side just to help the channel along because that little extra, you hear that? That little extra water helps to soften it. And yeah. I really like my channel really beyond fork tender. Um, I don't really like too much resistance in it. I like to just bite into it and it's like, mm. yeah. Yeah. not, not like know. mashed potatoes, but you still get that kind of comfort feel mm -hmm. like you're eating. You know, just all that good, soft, comforty food, very pillowy. I love when China reaches that consistency. So a little bit of water at this point. You can turn up the heat. It's a very resilient bean. <laughs> um, and you, it'll soften even more. And then I have half a cup of tamarind chutney. Ah. Oh, yes. You understand? Oh, my goodness. 
Who do you think you're messing with here? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, My that mouth is watering wait, so wait, badly. Wait, wait. Who do you thought was cooking today? <laughs> I've got to wipe up the drool. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. I love tamarind chutney. I love all chutney, but tamarind especially because it has that zing, mm -hmm. that tanginess and that sweetness. And that complements chana so well. Indian dishes are overall, but I just love it with chana. And what's really nice is that you will think with that water that I just added, it would be runny. But again, the starch from these beans thickens that so quickly that it becomes like a gravy and a sauce onto itself. You don't need any thickener. Just the natural starches as they're released are going to thicken it. And that is heavenly. Great any explanation. Questions? Everybody's just watching. Oh gosh! Are you going to be Are you going to be having this with um with a traditional roti or um paratha or are you oh, going to? Oh wait 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 wait! What is this? I have in my oven. Hold on here. <laughs> I have in my oven. Oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> I know. So that's bus up shot. <laughs> mm. Mm. For those of you who are a little confused, <laughs> that is um roti. We officially call roti or bus up shot in this case. Yes, which is paratha. 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 It's paratha. the one without without the um without the peas in it. Without it without the chickpeas ground the grounded mm -hmm. chickpeas. It's it's very silky. It's very soft. Um, and, and it melts in your mouth it when melts you. Melts in your mouth. It melts in your mouth. So that's what we're going to be eating this with with our hands because we're keeping yeah. it tactile. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Mm -hmm. So let's see. I might need a, let me try, let me see how this is coming along. Do a little taste test. Mmm, pretty good. Needs a little salt. Don't be afraid to adjust your seasonings as you go along, people. That's one yeah. thing I do. I it's like to do it. To, to add the salt to taste. Exactly. It's very hard, you know, sometimes people want exact measurements of salt and pepper. That is so hard to do. I mean, you know, you can, you can put a starting point. But after that, really just use your, your, your senses because every ingredient batch is going to be a little bit different. Everybody's mm -hmm. palate is a little bit different. Sure. You know, don't, don't use then, four tablespoons if you're not sure but <laughs> what you're doing. But, you and know. then it's also important to remember um, people may have health considerations as well. Very much so. And yeah. I always say you can add salt, you can't take it away. So, I'll take it away. You know, yeah. I cook just to the point where I feel this is good, but then you provide at the table whoever needs a little bit more. Exactly. A little, a little trick if you put too much salt, you just take a potato or two, put it in yes. there, that potato will soak it up. Or yes. if you don't have a potato, you have apples, cut up some apples, put it in there, it does the same job as a potato. It will suck up that extra salt. That's a good tip, That's Yeah, it's a nice tip. I, 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 a very nice tip. Um, one time some salt got away from me and uh, <laughs> 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 and I remember what my grandmother said. My, actually my grandmother told me that tip about the potato. Okay. Uh, put, the, put the extra potatoes in there and uh, you could always remove the potatoes with, mm -hmm. with the extra salt, you know, or, okay. or, or you could eat it. But um, uh, if you, like I said, for those of you who live in North America, you might have potato, but yes, you do have a lot of potatoes up there. But if you want to use apples, if you have apples in the fridge, you could use apples to take out some of the salt. If mm -hmm. if your dish goes a little overboard with with the salt content. So this is at the right point, but it's still a little hard for me. So I'm just gonna put the lid on, and that's a way to always speed up the cooking process. Just put the lid on if you find that your dish is taking a while. To get to where you want to go, just put the lid on because it increases the pressure in the pot, so the heat goes up, and uh, everything is contained. So the chana will break down and you know cook down a lot faster once I have that pot on. Mm -hmm. So we can get straight to our smoothie, uh huh? Right. Yeah, I'm ready for something to drink now. Yeah, I would think so. Something we, sweet. We 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 something put little alcohol in that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> any any rum? Any rum going in that? <laughs> no rum today. I have a set of um, what do you call them? Teetotalers or what kind of some kind of also. Yeah, teetotalers. Yeah. Tea yeah, I have yeah. a bunch of them with me today. You know, so I was hoping Jessie would be here because I know she's not driving and things, so she <laughs> can uh, get a little wasted with me. But it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be. But that's good. I have responsible. It's drivers. okay. I'll, I'll encourage you. 
Because I'm going nowhere. Yeah. She's not going nowhere. So we can go. But I have responsible drivers here, and that is a that's a good thing, right? Uh huh. Okay. I, I just. Um, Serena, I just want to remind folks that your show is coming up on December the 6th. And what's that mean? It will be premiering December the 6th at 7 p.m. Eastern? Eastern time, yes. Okay. I know. And what's I the name? 7 I want to hear the name. I like the name of it. Sweet, Sweet time. time. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and Caribbean cooking with Serena. That indeed. That indeed. The Trini Gourmet. And if you need to look at um, some of Serena's past work, she's been blogging since 2007, you can go to trinigourmet.com. That's T-R-I-N-I-G-O-U-R-M-E-T.com. And if you want more recipes, I have um, a new ebook, Glam by Request. So you can go to glambyrequest.com as well and see what recipes I have up there. Cool. Great, great. So and this is what I'm doing. I'm doing the electrolyzer. And it's called the yeah. electrolyzer because the main component is coconut water. And that I that is what I call the elixir of the gods. Because I think coconut water cures so many things. Like it is just so good for wellness. Yeah, the, interesting what, what, thing, Larry, what? the interesting thing is we've been drinking coconut we've been using coconut products since we were small. And the world is now turned on to coconut. And it's, Thank you. And it's, and it's, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's well, we've wonderful. Been, we've been drinking coconut water. We've been using coconut oil, um, coconut milk. I have this, some frozen uh, bananas here. Well, at this point, they are half thawed bananas, but they were frozen. Um, and again, I love my Ziploc bags because I'm a girl who loves smoothies, and nothing makes it convenient than to just chop up that fruit, have it already portioned in the freezer. You have a smoothie ready to go. So I have the coconut water, I have the banana, I have the, I'm leaning into the camera here, move. Um, <laughs> hold on. Can you pass me, there should be some celery, a bowl of celery there. No, who's, my um, who's your cameraman today? My cameraman is fumbling for celery, but I have my celery. <laughs> and again, that just adds a little bit of um, brightness to the blend because celery has such a, a strong flavor, so you don't need too much. But again, you're just getting, again, more of those vitamins, all more of those nutrients. It's really good for you. It's, it's also raw because, as Larry knows, I do like quite a bit of raw cuisine. And I try to always have a raw component to my meals. So yeah. even if I have two or three cooked dishes, always trying to make a conscious effort to have one or two raw dishes in there as well. It doesn't have to be salads. It can be a drink. Sometimes it can even be a side dish. Um, raw dish is really good for the system as well. So, Serena, I have a question. I have a question for you regarding your show. Mm -hmm. You you would be um, featuring some raw. I would be working raw dishes into it. I wouldn't say that it's the mainstay of the program, but mm -hmm. there will be raw dishes, um, raw vegan and gluten free are things that I'm very mindful of because of my own daily life and my family's dietary needs. So I've adapted quite a few Caribbean dishes to meet those parameters. So I'll be working that into dishes as well that are much more traditional as well. Um, all with an eye towards entertaining because that's my thing. I love the whole glam concept, Caribbean glam, and that's what I'm about. Nice, so nice. I'll get the blender. It's ready to go. I have some sweetener on the side just in case it needs a little more of a kick. Um, but we'll see how sweet these bananas are for us before we decide. So when we ready for me to hit liquefy? Go ahead. All right then. Let it rip. <laughs> uh, sounds like we're at the racetrack or something. <laughs> Hey, George, you can make that on the um, Pirates Pub. Just put a little alcohol in that one. That's right. That's right. Uh, for, uh, just uh, in case you missed it, um, I put a link to uh, her Trini Gourmet site there in uh, the group chat box. So you can oh. pop across and, and take a look at that gorgeous site, trinigourmet.com. I don't think they can see it in the group yeah, chat. Folks you outside, you won't be able to see the, the chat box, Jesse. Thanks, thanks, though. Thanks. Yeah, you're the best, Jess. Mm -hmm. Even some of the ones here in the peanut gallery made it easier for them. <laughs> so I've got my smoothie right here. I've got my electrolyzer. All right. Is... Lovely. It's and good. she's drinking it in front of us. Oh, wow. I have a milk mustache now, but it's banana. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so it's vegan, it's raw, it's healthy, it's to live for, as Larry said. To live for that, uh, to, this, to this meal, you know, which is very rich. It's a very rich meal. This helps to cut through. Lovely. Uh. <laughs> so let's see how oh. our chan is doing. Oh, that is a gorgeous color. And it should be pretty tender by now. Oh, gosh, yes. Larry and Jesse will recognize what I have going on here right now. Yeah. Exactly what's going on there. Hold on, I'm going to turn that. A little bit of bun bun. Yeah. <laughs> that, just, that, that just makes it, the flavor even richer. Yeah. And that chutney is caramelizing as well, the sugar. Yeah, because you, you remember, she, she put some, um, some tamarind in there. Tamarind. That's right. So that would give it a little brownness that you that you see. Oh, yeah. the, the color is beautiful. You you didn't you didn't burn that, sweetheart. That looks great. It's fantastic. Okay. That is that is nice. <laughs> nice. That, that is, is nice. nice. Let's see if I can get a spoonful for you all here without burning myself. Can you see that? Yes. Oh, oh nice. wow! Gorgeous. <laughs> My mouth up? is watering <laughs> so much up? right now. <laughs> That is because the thing. I know that what that tastes right? like. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing, so. <laughs> so. Let me just see how that is. I don't want to burn myself. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure it's a okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to cover that because it continues to, to, to cook and to soften, but the heat is off. So I turned off the heat. I'll put the lid on. I have my second batch of um, dal here, but the first batch is ready. I have my smoothie. Okay. And that's pretty much it at this point. You, 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 you're going to play it? You're going to play it? I'm going to play it. Yes, I am. Yeah. So, I think oh, you yeah, had some hungry people there, there, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to play it with some of that gorgeous bus up shot as well, so you can get it mm -hmm. full. The full yeah, vibration. Show, um, show the folks the bus up shot again. I know. Yeah. It, uh, folks, it literally means burst up, a, a bursted shirt, okay? A burst shirt. Because that's but, what it looks like. It looks like a shirt that's been, you know, shredded, basically. But, mm. but since we are Trinis, we speak very fast and we, 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 we shortcut. We, take, we yes. like to take shortcuts when we speak. So we say bus up. Instead of saying up. burst up, yeah. we say bus up. <laughs> right, lovely. So I have the parata here, see, and that's why it's called a bust up shot because you can see it's folded and um crinkly yeah. onto each other in layers. Let me and it's uh, very similar to like keep you know like if you're familiar with like puff pastry and croissants and how it gets that flakiness because of the layers of dough. That's yeah. basically the same principle here that's going on in bus up shots. So very light, very flaky. Um, very very <laughs> I'm going to take some of that dal. Mm. It has the shadow bunny and coconut as well that's infused. Mm. So Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get another spoon. Can you pass me a spoon, Jay? My hidden Jay. The curry Jay. So, um, Jay, Jay is your cameraman. He is your sous chef. He is your helper. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got the chana as well. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to stir in me. I'm so happy with my chana that I completely forgot to stir in the spinach. And the reason I forgot to stir in the spinach was, one, I was talking and I was really carried away. But it's also because the spinach literally takes two seconds. So let me just get that spinach. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, yeah, because um, the recipe did call for some spinach to be yes. put in there. So I have my baby leaf spinach here. Traditional would be using bhaji. Bhaji, so right. Bhaji. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a lazy cook. I admit it freely. And I don't really always have time or inclination to peel and clean and string the bhaji because people here know that it has some stringy fibers that you have to remove if you want, yes, a, if you want a pleasant experience. <laughs> so Miss Thing here just grabs, you sometimes these days just grab the bag of baby leaf spinach, which is also more accessible to you cooks abroad. 
and um, mm -hmm. that renders down in seconds just from the residual heat here. It wills effortlessly, yeah. and I don't want it to completely wilt because yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like to, I don't like to overcook my my vegetables. Exactly. You're losing enzymes, vegetables. you're losing nutrients, you're losing yeah, texture. Yeah, I, I don't like to overcook it. I I rather use the residual heat to, mm -hmm. to, to cook it, you know? Exactly. Uh, so for, uh, for our friends further afield, uh, we have a saying here in Trinidad, um, boil down like a pot of baji, and you can see for yourself um, uh, <laughs> how quickly those leaves, you know, boiled down in that residual heat. Exactly, and you can see that happening right here. I had a pot yeah. full of leaves, wow. and now it has... Now they're, they're literally boiled down. They have, they have boiled down. Wow. You know, and again, I, I love a multicolored plate. I cannot stand monochromatic. I, I, I eat with my eyes. <laughs> so I, I also love the pop of green that it adds. I could have kept it clean, but I love that pop of green as well. So you're getting nutrients, you're getting color. And now I can finish plating. Look at yeah. <laughs> I told you that, I can't that, that, other things, Larry, you see? <laughs> that, that, took, that took about a minute, if that long. Yeah, yes. you see? It didn't throw me off at all. And so. it's healthy. Can you see that? Yeah. And it's all healthy. <laughs> that's gorgeous. Delicious. Thank you. So that's going to be our pot. Anybody want to taste? Yes. Want a taste yes, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, I want to taste. <laughs> yeah, I want to <laughs> Oh, okay. He's bringing, me, he's bringing Michelle as well, so the audience gets to meet the other guests. <laughs> Come quickly. Hi, um, Kamish. You want to taste? Sure. You have to come along. <laughs> you have to say hi to the people. Hello, everyone. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. hi Harry. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Well, bon appetit. You want to take a taste? Sure. Yeah, let's take a taste. Bon appetito. Mm -hmm. I remember we eat with our hands down here. Yes. Yes. Especially when you eat she it. Dig it in. In. She didn't even finish. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. That is a wonderful Diwali dish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be eating at my table, and Jay is actually going to walk mm. you to my table just for the last few seconds, so you can see what we're going to do. What we're sitting right. down to. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm excited to see your tablescape. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm still here though, and mm -hmm. I might pick up a little bit myself. <laughs> Mind oh, if I eat some caramel? <laughs> another quick fact: um, in uh, in uh, when they want to do a traditional spread, um, they would actually eat this dish on uh, banana leaves, huh? Jeez. Not so large, yeah. like Santorina. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very really different flavor. When, when, when you go to a Hindu wedding, that's right. Or, or you go to Hindu prayers. They serve you that same dish on a banana leaf. Well, it's, nice. it's kind of the same. That's the same philosophy as a as a paper plate, right? I mean, you know, you can eat it. And yeah. Then, then yeah. It's the leaf is the plate. Yeah, it's <laughs> and it's good for the environment. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So everybody's sitting down. Yeah. I'm so hungry yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can see me still. So yep. So, all right. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Nice. That's the table. <laughs> it's real. Real cooking, real food, real life. <laughs> real sweet hand. Real, real sweet hand. <laughs> yeah. Good one, Jess. <laughs> Good use of the tagline, Jay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any questions? All right. Any 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 questions, folks? No, yeah, it's all great. It looks great. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I got a question. When do we eat? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Serena, again, you you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Oh, thanks for inviting us to your kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, folks, I'm sorry about the delay. But um, we got the show through. Serena did a wonderful job. The recipe can be found on the on my on the event. Sorry, 
are learning how to cook, I will also be posting it out after the show to the stream, to my stream. So, yeah. Serena, thanks again. Her show of debut course. is the 6th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Be there or be yeah. square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ended with that, really. <laughs> oh, gosh, I know, I know. It's kind of lame. I know it's lame. I know it's lame. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thanks. I want to thank everybody in the stream. Who, who stopped by? George and George, Marilyn, Jesse, Linda, oh. of course, Serena, Richard from South Africa. I know it's late over there. And thanks for staying up and thanks for uh, uh, help, helping Thank us out. You, next Thank week, you. Next week, join us here at 4 o'clock Eastern Time for another episode of Learning How to Cook Caribbean with Larry Finalier. And I believe Stacy Fraser will be on next week. So, folks, oh, boy. bon appetit. And see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.